you can only stretch the passengers so far. Deregulation will mean that other operators will be trying to get our passengers to travel on their buses. And they won't be going after the loss-making routes. They'll be attacking the routes where we make our profit. The only control will be competition. And some of the competition are already running on most of our major routes, and so they know the market. If we allow them to come in without a fight, we might as well pack up and go home. At the moment, we're the big established operator. But that doesn't just mean that we're strong. It also means that we're vulnerable. When the other big operators start attacking our routes, we're the only ones with the passengers to lose. We're going to have to fight, and fight hard to keep our jobs. But it's not all bad news. We do have a plan. Now let's get one thing clear. This program is about fighting to make profits. Profits to pay wages, profits to buy new buses, and profits to secure as many jobs as possible in the future. In the past, as licensed operators, we had it all our own way. Not only did we have protected routes, but we also were given a subsidy to help us run services where there are not enough passengers to cover the costs. In October, all that will be over and it will be up to us whether or not we run each and every route in strict business terms. As things stand, nearly half our routes would not qualify. Let's look at profits, losses and subsidy. The situation at the moment is that some routes make good profits. A lot more make just a bit of profit. But all this profit is swallowed up by loss-making routes. Some of these lose only a little. Some lose quite heavily. But just 8% of our mileage is losing over three-quarters of a million pounds a year. All the profits have to go to support the loss-making routes. But there's still a gap, and up to now this has been filled by revenue support from the region. But all this will change. Revenue support stops in October. Our competitors will attack our profitable routes. This must cut down the money available to keep the loss-making mileage running. We must protect the profitable routes and take action quickly to reduce the losses so that these services can stand on their own feet. So who are our competitors going to be? Some, like McGill's, Graham's and Pride of the Clyde, are competing already. Others are unknown and unseen, but perhaps they're not the biggest threat. However, there is one operator, the biggest in our area, who have the buses, who already have the people and who desperately need our revenue. The Strathclyde Passenger Transport Executive. The PTE has already been nibbling away at the edges of our territory, but they've been doing even more in other parts of Strathclyde. These are their routes as they stood in 1980. And these are the routes they operate now. You can see how they're spreading. In our own area, they've already started, and we know about some of their future plans. In 1980, they were running these routes. And we also know that they are already running, have tried to run, or are planning to run these extra routes in the Clydeside area. This will be confirmed when, like everyone else, they register their intentions. But there's another side to this argument. They will also know what our routes will be, because we will have to register our routes as well. The other big threats are minibuses and taxis. They will be able to be much more flexible than we can be with big buses, and they won't have to have lots of passengers to fill their vehicles. Unless we take the fight to them, we're going to lose even more of the short-distance passengers. These are the problems and threats that we face. But what are we doing about them? We must protect as far as we can the money we're earning on our profitable routes, and reduce losses on the ones that aren't. Our plans on how to do this are challenging, but we've done the groundwork. We know what the customer wants, so the plan for survival isn't just based on ideas, it's based on facts. Our customer, the passenger, wants a high quality service at value for money prices. If the customers get what they want, they become loyal customers and will travel with us in preference to the other operators. We'll talk more about prices a little later on, but for the moment let's talk about quality of service. Fast, friendly service and basic good manners towards the people who pay our wages are important. But all-round quality involves much more than that. All-round quality takes in things like how many buses a day on a particular route. Are we using the right type of vehicle? What times of day are best for the customer? Are the journey times as fast as they might be? 
Does our network of routes get the customer to their destination with the minimum fuss? Do we tell our passengers enough about our services? At the moment, we are working on a review of the routes. We will soon know which ones we want to register, and don't be surprised if it includes some new ones. How often we run any route in a day will depend on how many people want to travel. It's a fairly straightforward piece of thinking to get the answer of more people, more buses. This means that many of the services will remain as they are. One man operated, single or double deck. The arithmetic is already right. But what happens when there are a lot of people trying to get to the shops, for example? They want to get there quickly, so they'll usually get on the first bus that comes along. We want that bus to be a Clydeside bus. For some routes, that means that we're going to use buses with conductors. The crewed bus is at least 10% quicker than one man operated. But that doesn't just mean that the passengers get to where they're going a lot sooner. More importantly, it means that we get to the stops ahead of the competition, and we pick up the passengers on the highly profitable routes, not them. At the other end of the scale is the short route, where people want to be able to hop on a bus just when it suits them. But not many people are travelling at the same time. Taxis and minibuses are our biggest threat on these routes. You'll already have seen minibuses licensed as taxis running about, and soon they will be able to charge individual fares just like us. We can't compete using a big bus on these services, so we must introduce minibuses ourselves. The advantage here is that the passengers will get the frequent services they want, and we will keep more jobs. Now, it's not just a question of saying that one of our vehicles will be there. It has to be there when we say, and it must get to its destination. Maintenance and repairs are just as important. They are the mainstays of our entire operation. Without proper maintenance, we won't have the buses at the stops, and our competitors will pick up the passengers, the money, and in the long run, the jobs. It's all about getting the customer's loyalty. If they know that we're going to provide a high quality of service, then they're going to stick with us. But there are other ways of getting loyalty. Good pricing creates loyalty too. We're going to have to beat the competition on price. And if the other bus isn't far behind ours, or if they arrive at the stop at the same time, then even a single penny could make the difference. In the longer term, it's not just how much the price is, but also how it's paid. We've already introduced the hop-on tickets to increase customer loyalty. If we can get the passengers to pay in advance for a number of journeys, then obviously they're going to travel with us. And because the hop-on tickets are sold at post offices or ticket agents, then they're also going to speed up the service, and we win again. A high-quality service must also be flexible. But in order to be flexible, managers need to know what's going on. We'll be increasing the responsibility of local managers and inspectors. They're the people who are seeing what's happening on their routes every day, so they're the people who know what's needed. The area managers will have to rely more on the team below them and give them freedom to make decisions in response to events. Now, it's impossible to respond to anything without resources, so we will be making the resources available. There will be crews and vehicles on call, ready to respond to any situation that arises. It's a good strategy. It gives us the best chance of survival. It covers all the points from the structure of the route network, the type of vehicles that will be best on any particular route, ensuring that the vehicle is in the right condition to complete its journey, it allows management at all levels to be more flexible and responsive, and it gives us an imaginative way of setting our prices and how they're paid. But it won't work. Not unless we get it totally right. To get it right, there are two more key areas, people contact and reliability. The passengers who climb aboard our buses pay our wages, all our wages. Not just the crews who look after them day after day, but also the inspector who they see only occasionally, the mechanic who turns out to a breakdown, the inquiry staff at the end of the telephone, the person who responds to a complaint about our service, and the managers whose job it is to design a system which works. When the passengers have a choice, they won't have to put up with anything but the very best. Every one of us has the chance to lose a customer, lose too many, and none of us have jobs. And the passengers will have to be able to rely on every one of us. They will have to know that we will be there day after day, on time. If the buses are dirty and unreliable, the passengers will use someone else's bus. If someone else gets the passengers, they also get the money, and if they get the money, they also get the jobs. 
Deregulation is coming, whether we like it or not. We can't stop it, and however hard we try, we're bound to take some knocks. But we have the upper hand. We have the roots, and we have the experience, and now we have the best strategy for the future. We have to take the fight to the competition, and we have to beat them on quality. Remember, they will attack us because they think they can get at our money. But if we can build up the loyalty of our customers, then the competition will discover that it's not worth their while fighting and go away. It will be tough while we do it, but if we do it right, then all of us at Clydeside will have a secure and prosperous future. <laughs>